Hello, welcome to the Thursday, July 30th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. You probably noticed that VPNs have become a big thing to sell and uh, lots of, for example, YouTube videos are featuring VPN vendors as sponsors. Well, just lately there have been some breaches that actually leaked logs from VPNs that claimed not to do any logging. So I took a quick look at some of the claims that some of these VPNs uh, make and how they stack up with reality. Just a little uh, post here to compare what VPNs can and cannot do, and of course, what some of the drawbacks are of routing all of your traffic through a VPN provider's endpoints. And talking about better anonymous browsing, there's actually a new version of Tails, the Linux distribution that's built around Tor and uh, other technologies to make browsing as anonymous as possible. Now, this version does fix a number of security vulnerabilities, also updates the underlying browser, the latest version of Firefox. So we do have an update for Firefox, also an update for Chrome. The Chrome update was actually released on Monday. Nothing I would uh, call super critical here, of course. Uh, The advisories are very limited. Firefox is talking about uh, some potential privacy leaks, which is probably why it's so important that you also update Tails. But then we also have a vulnerability in Grub2 that has received quite a bit of press and well in part it's justified in part not. This is really one of those a uh, little bit uh, tricky vulnerabilities to really sort of gauge the potential. Grub2 is your bootloader so it's the software that's running before the operating system is actually booted and as such it's an important part of secure boot so no unauthorized operating system can be loaded. And this is a critical phase of uh, the system's boot process, of course. If it is compromised, then essentially the entire system is compromised. So it is particularly well protected, or at least should be. So what Grub is doing is in part governed by a configuration file. And the problem here is that the parser for this configuration file does contain a fairly straightforward and simple buffer overflow. With this, an attacker who is able to edit this Grub.cfg file is able to execute arbitrary code at the time Grub is running, which again would compromise the boot process. Now one thing that sort of speaks against this being a huge problem is that in order to edit Grub.cfg, you have to be root, so uh, you already have to have the system compromised. But this is something an attacker could potentially use to sort of gain persistent access to a system even after the system is being rebuilt. Overall, there are probably more important things for you to worry about. I would not uh, expedite patching this particular vulnerability for your average desktop or server, but as patches are being released for it for various Linux distributions, and Linux is mostly affected here, but other operating systems can use the Krupp bootloader as well. You may find it, uh, for example, in multi-boot systems quite a bit. Well, in those cases, just uh, apply the update as it becomes available. And one problem biometrics, in particular facial recognition algorithms, are of course dealing with these days is people wearing face masks. Apple, for example, in iOS, essentially just built in a mode to face ID. If it recognizes you're wearing a mask, it will fall back to the password authentication on your phone. NIST now published a study where they actually took a systematic look at how well facial recognition algorithms are dealing with masks and, well, 
I'm actually thinking that the results are better than I would have thought. The best algorithm that they found has a failure rate of about 5% with the highest coverage mask that they tested, which compares to 0.3% if the same person doesn't wear a mask. However, this was the best one now some other algorithms that actually do better without masks are doing worse with masks. I think that makes somewhat sense that uh, these algorithms are probably taking a larger percentage of the face for their facial recognitions. That's why they're better for unmasked people, but they're now failing 20 to 50% of the times for masked people. Another little tidbit here looks like the darker the masks are, the higher the failure rate. And now they only tested two colors here, a light blue mask and a black mask. The black mask had higher failure rates. So if you want to hide yourself from facial recognition, try a black mask to increase the effectiveness of the mask. They also talk a detail about different shapes and the like. So again, if you're interested, the link to the full report is in the show notes.